Hey everyone and welcome to our SIG release meeting. Um, this meeting adheres to the CNCF code of conduct, so I would like to remind you to just be excellent to each other as always. I pasted a link to the agenda in the chat, so please add yourself to the list of attendees. And let's jump over to the recurring topics. So first of all, we would like to welcome any new members or attendees in this call. Do we have anyone who would like to introduce Jews themselves. It looks like that we have no new members on this call. So the first topic is probably work and progress by Jeremy. So we are right now on our way to combine those bi-weekly meetings with the release engineering meeting and also this meeting. And there is a doodle out on the SIG release mailing list um, where you can add your preferred times. And I'm pretty sure that Jeremy will uh, evaluate the results pretty soon and then we can adjust the appointments and yeah, fix them accordingly to, to fit all time zones as best as possible. Then let's move over to the sub project updates. Do we have anyone from release engineering who would like to provide us an update on release engineering? Uh, probably again, I mean, we have a couple of topics on the agenda today regarding that. Uh, but uh, I think one of the main one is that uh, we've been meeting over the last few weeks with uh, Lori to uh, get some uh, road mapping sessions done. And uh, I think she'll uh, present a little bit about that. And uh, the other one is that uh, we are kicking off work on the Salsa 3 compliance effort. So uh, uh, also more on that on some of the upcoming topics. And I, I, I think that that's it for me. I may be missing something, but but those are. Mm. Do we have anything regarding Golang updates? There's a, I think Dim is working on that, and there's a basically we're waiting for GA to be released next week, so we can cut, um, beta one. Do you have stuff for that? I. Cool. I was doing the updates for Go 119, but then I got to like a vacation and I saw like this week that Dims took over this. But uh, I feel that this might got the, the same issue we got like the last time with the Go 118, that we got some memory leaks and other things. And like, I, I'm, I'm not sure if we, we want to do 125 and move to go 119 right away because it's very close to the code freeze and all the stuff. That's why when I opened the, the PR for the go RC1, uh, I got some, like I got a question and then I, I, I answered like, we might just keep this open to test and uh, push to go 19 on 126, but I'm not sure. Yeah, so that I was think, a, sorry, go ahead. Uh, so I think James and Jordan are pushing to basically get one, 19. 119 for 125. Like, I think we had a quick conversation with them and they were okay. We basically ship 119 after code freeze in the KK repo. It's just about basically how how the GA version will be this, and that's gonna give you go and no go about this. Okay, so um, ah. it's a bad schedule because the same way we we cut the release in the same way we the one twenty nine gonna be GA. That's the goal. Okay, I'm gonna sync uh, with Dims and get some yep. status. And regarding like the others, the goal one seventeen and one eighteen. I saw last week that uh, those have some patches, but I didn't see any issue or 
anything on our side to update, I'm going to work on that uh, after this meeting and create the issues and start to work, work on the updates for those. Cool. Do we have a plan for if there's a show stopping bug and go 119? No reason. <laughs> Say again, James. Um, so if you do we have a plan for if there's a show stopping bug in Go 119 that blocks the release as of ah. what happened in last time? Yeah, I'm gonna speak with yeah, I'm gonna speak with Dims and see because like uh, when we open that, I put like and make sure that that. We're gonna, not going to merge, but looks like Dims and uh, uh, List is willing to do that. Then I'm I'm going to sink and see the plans. I I don't have a, an answer right now. Like it doesn't need to be a lot. Also, if the plan is just we definitely delay, then yeah, that's fine. But yeah. I think it should be plan. I also know that I mean no one has communicated this to me directly, but just uh, phishing and conversations around different Slack channels. Uh, I have seen people propose, well, specifically Ligit and Dims propose an additional RC, which of course we can do. Uh, but in, in my opinion, I think that all of that would only make sense if we end up delaying uh, everything by a week or two. But I don't know. I, I don't want to call any shots there, but yeah. I, uh, to your question, uh, James, I think that an RSC would be a good way to to gauge uh, the situations. And then <laughs> if things break really bad, well, then I don't know, but I don't think so. Yeah, um, thanks, James, for the question. I'm, I was going to ask the same thing, <laughs> like for the current release. I saw some discussion around the Go version bumping, and I saw someone already um, proposed that, like, if I just curious if it's possible to get like the Go version revert back to 118 and uh, didn't postpone to the release date, if that's uh, an option. Or like we, I don't know, we have to go with like Go 1.19. If I like, my opinion, if we decide like if we upgrade and see that doesn't work and have a lot of features. We definitely can go back. That's a lot of stuff to do, but we can go back. But I'm not and sure uh, if this Jordan, is the idea. Yeah, conversation. Since they are also open with um, reverting back to go 1.18 if it's buggy, but we'll see. Thank you. Arno, you have a hand up. Uh, I think there are multiple factors we need to consider because we, by flipping to 119, we identify a bug. Um, I think James and Jordan identify a bug in the Golan CI lane and the, where's the issue to Golan. I think that's gonna, the fix will be learned in the G, in the G version of 119. And from there, we can just try to basically try to merge that in the master branch. If it's not possible, we can basically say, okay, we go 119 with uh, go 119 and go 118 with Kubernetes 125. I think there's no really problem in that. There are multiple factors that's going to happen in a very short time. So we just need to keep basically opportunity open about merging that the next week. All right, let's follow up on this discussion. Thank you for all the update to y'all. Let's move over to the release team update. Do we have anyone on the from the release team here to provide us an update? Um um, yes, CC here. Uh, I'm currently the release lead for the 1.25. And uh, um, thanks, Ray, for adding that. And we will have like the mid cycle retro scheduled tomorrow. Um, we are working like the major um, uh, the major <laughs> milestone we are currently having is next week's um, code phrase. We, um, I've sent out the reminder to the community, and I'll send uh, out uh, another reminder maybe later this week or early next week. Um, yeah, so the only like issue we are not sure of is about the, the Go version. And besides that, everything's working fine as expected. And we have all the alpha cut 
Thanks for Veronica. Um, ready? Yeah. So we're looking forward to the code phrase. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Thank you for this update. If we don't have anything else regarding the release team, then we can move over to our open discussions. So James, you're the first one with the release team selection reassign enhancement. Hello. Um, so um, this is a topic I've talked about a couple of times. So as you know, my my intent or desire is to change the way the release team is, is selected, primarily how the shadows are selected or the, the, the non-lead portions of the team. Um, there's a whole bunch of reasons for this, uh, largely making it easier for contributors to continue being a part of the team, because right now you have to go through the shadow survey multiple times, which is suboptimal, in my opinion. Um, and after a bunch of discussions, um, after this, both in person at KubeCon North America, no, so KubeCon Europe, and online at various points, I ended up writing this proposal, which I kind of left for like six weeks while I just kind of fell over, but now I'm back, it's, it's, it's here. Um, so this is CAP3344, I've updated it, there are some comments on there, uh, there are some from, from Sasha as well, which I need to go through, um, but I think it's in a reasonable state. And basically, I just wanted to highlight, well, A, it's there, and I'd like people to take a look at it if, if they're interested. And then there's a couple of things in particular about it, which are, are of note, which is one, that if we did this, it would be a straight to GA process enhancement. There's no real possibility for an alpha or a beta, unless we wanted to get into the world of having like two parallel release teams, which just sounds horrendous. So there's no real way to, to trial run this. We're just going to do it or we don't. Um, although the back out operation, if we don't like it, is just to try it for a release. And if we hate it, we can just go back to the old mechanism, the old release. It's not, it's not a permanent change if we don't like it, for example. Um, and the other question would be, is there enough time to do this for 126? Um, I don't know the answer to that question. I suspect that the only person here that might know would be Ray as the 125 EA. Um, so yeah, those are the two things I'd be really interested in people's opinions on. A, do anyone have a concern about the idea of doing this straight to GA? And B, did people, anyone have a concern about 126? And Ray his hand up. Yeah. Um... So in the enhancements uh, sub-project meeting last week, we actually talked about uh, a new cap template for process changes. So where process for like processes for SIGs, things like this might have to go straight to GA. So it has been discussed, um, uh, but not nothing finalized. Um, I think if we if the cap does go through, I I don't know if I still also don't know if we have time to do this for 126 like how that uh, we have enough time to uh, I think we do I mean uh, well actually no because it's 126 the the shadow selection process starts in less than a month um, if we have enough time to communicate this thoroughly and how much communication we do we need how do we gauge that like how do we determine uh, how we communicate can we communicate this enough uh, for it um, for, to make this change for the community, I um, in my head I, I'm 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 saying no for 126 just because it's we're gonna start in like two three weeks pretty much for announcement for shadows or um, so that's just those are just my opinions. Yeah, I mean most of the overhead for communication would actually be to existing members. That's that's who it's really gonna change for. Um, so in my original proposal, it changed the shadow survey as well, but Sasha made the point that we don't really need to do that and we can just leave the shadow survey as it is. So the, the change would end up being that if you are a brand new shadow, you go through one process, you go through a big shadow survey, which looks pretty much as it does now. And if you're not a brand new shadow, then you end up on the, on the roster and going through the roster process. So the communication would largely be to people who are existing shadows or have been recent shadows would be the only change. Um, if that, I don't know if that changes your opinion at all, if that lowers the communication overhead, um, but yeah. Um, I, I think it does if we, you know, if we start <laughs> pretty soon on this, but um, 
can I think a big determining factor also if, if, if this is merged and when that is merged, then we could start communicating or do we start communicating now as an open PR, but. Um, so how, how about sending a mail to KDEF and asking for additional input and then we can get a feeling about the, yeah, if the community is in favor of adding or changing it or if we should reconsider the enhancement. Yeah, it works for me. Okay, I'll. I'll go through your changes, Sasha, and largely accept them. I'm pretty happy with them. And then I'll send an email to KDEV this afternoon. And cool. we'll, we'll see where we stand, I guess. And Ray, I guess, will keep in contact and see what the feeling is around it. Like, if it, if it slips 127, it's not the end of the world. I mean, I'd like it to be 126, but, you know, it is what it is. <laughs> yeah. I mean, the question is, do we have to uh, adapt documentation? And it would be probably better to have one more release. For doing the change and also for setting up the roster right so we have to um we have to get a an alias on the kate's io repository at all the members and things like that get everything yeah, ready for the logistics involved. yeah yeah but generally i'm in favor of this enhancement also i'm personally totally it's it's great it's great to see that coming cool thank you Anything else regarding this enhancement? Because now we can move over to Adolfo, um, who has two topics. Um, the first one is the overview of the proposed file signing flow. Uh, yeah, uh, can you make me go host Sasha so that I can show my... Yep. Find the proper window. Okay, can you see it? Yep. All right, so this is coming from uh, one of the roadmap sessions that we had yesterday uh, regarding uh, file signing. Uh, so we in order to complete the signing the artifact skip, uh, we need to start signing files inside of uh, our release process. Um, there have been some plans and ideas uh, to build this into Trail, but after thinking about a little bit um, how we're going to be signing the attestations, which is the next topic to come, um, I think with that we need to do this in a different way. So this is how we are doing uh, image signing today inside of the release process. Uh, images, container images have, as of now, two, bits, two signatures, one that happens during staging and our, inside of our process. And then we have the Kubernetes wide organization signature during promotion. Uh, so if you see the first uh, diagram here, we build inside the images inside of staging, we sign them, and we have a second signature during image promotion, and then we release those. Uh, the problem with this approach is that we are uh, exposing the credential for the signer account to any code that gets executed during the build. Uh, this is generally not a good practice because you can potentially run uh, anything. Uh, Krell doesn't is not a security scanner, so to speak. So it doesn't know actually what it's running. It just runs a make, uh, and anything in the environment gets uh, it's made available to whatever is running during that step. So the idea is to split um, file signing out of the staging and add a new step that we can use uh, to sign the, um, I mean, the, 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 the most pressing one is now the, the, the files. And eventually we also need to start uh, moving the signing of the Im images, the first signature out of uh, staging. So this is what it would look like. So we would build and stage the images and files, and then add a second step in our Google Cloud build uh, run 
to sign for now the files and then eventually you also move the images outside. And then uh, we would, the idea is that we know what we built from, from staging because we have the SBOM for those. So that gives us the list of artifacts and then we sign them. And then uh, we store the signatures in the files in the staging bucket. And then we push the signatures to the registries, uh, to the staging registries. And then we carry on as we used to do with the image promotion and release. Um, uh, the, so the, the, there's also this new box about file promotion, which I'll get into in a little bit. Uh, but for now, uh, what I wanted to call out is we had been thinking about building signing capabilities uh, for files into Prel. But um, if we are going to split out signing into a step, into a regular Google Cloud build step, we might as well use uh, just go sign to generate the signature for those uh, for those artifacts. I mean, there's unless I'm missing some reason that we need to build signing into into Grail, um, I think it will get, we can do it uh, just by using adding a step to use go sign to sign, uh, and this applies both to our files and to images. Now we have been busy at work building a library that makes signing with the six or tools easier. And this is where the file promotion thing applies. If we uh, start signing the files during, uh, after we stage them, this will, uh, this will not result in a benefit for any projects outside of Kubernetes itself, because the only files that we will be signing would be those that we build during during the build process of, of Kubernetes. So um, if you remember, and you've been in some of the uh, release engineering discussions, we're also working on file promotion. Um, the same promoter that promotes images also is capable of, of uh, promoting files. Uh, there are very few projects that use it today, um, but I think we can uh, still use our code uh, to move to build signing file signing capabilities to kpromo uh, when promoting files. And in that way, we can extend the benefit of signing artifacts to the rest of the, to the rest of the community. Um, so uh, yesterday uh, during the road mapping session, uh, a lot of you were uh, surprised by the, the way I tried to break down the problem because we didn't have this kind of context, uh, but I hope uh, that seeing this in, in this way can make you uh, visualize things better. So right now, what we have to decide is if we want to uh, split it out, and second, if we want to use uh, vanilla cosine to sign our, our artifacts, or if there's a reason, we can also build signing capabilities into Corel. So I, I, I'm not sure if anybody has uh, opinions about that, or or uh, we can just continue later the discussion once people have time to think about the problem a little bit and we can go there. Uh, I see Matthias at the hand. Yeah, I, I have a, a question about the image and file promotion because in, your, in what you are explaining, uh, you mentioned signing as part of the file promotion is that it, it's not part of the, the tooling, right? Because what you're referring here is you are doing the signing in a separate step. So it's not actually signing as part of the file promotion or am I missing something? Yeah, uh, yeah, maybe that didn't, well, I wasn't clear in that in just, just about. So signing, adding a step to sign the files during our Google Cloud build runs will get us the benefit of, um, with very low work, actually ticking off the box that we need to finish the cap of signing artifacts. And, but the problem with that approach is that it, it only applies to the regular Kubernetes release binaries. So kubectl and all, all, and all the files that you find in the release bucket. If we want to extend this the, the, and help the whole community to sign their files, we need to build and also ensure that people start using more the file promoter. 
and this is this is a different uh, this is a different tool and this is a different process that the Kubernetes uh, artifacts do not use today. Um, but as we are uh, making some changes, especially now considering things like, for example, uh, the rework of the packages, and since we're going to be moving things a little bit more, we can consider uh, building file signing capabilities to the promoter. Uh, but this is that's why I said that in gray because it's a it's not part of the cap right now, but it's something we should consider in the future. So that would be K promo, right? Yeah, exactly. So I have two two points here. Um, the first one is that I think that this new workflow is way better than the one we proposed in one of the caps. Um, and I think we have to update the enhancements, which to clarify everything and also collect all issues which are now linked to this cap somehow together. So I would like to, so I'm kind of tending towards um, stopping the implementation and updating the enhancement and then doing the implementation in the next release cycle because we don't have one month left, right? So we just would also have to update documentation for end users and I see a risk that we, that we, we are not able to do that. Yeah, and the second uh, thing is that um, for using Cosine um, as plain CLI tool, um, the thing is, I wouldn't expect that it will be this simple. So I would say we probably end up having a bash script somewhere which collects the files and does something. And that was the reason why we get rid of Anago, right? So we wanted to get rid of any bash, uh, which, is pro which is hardly testable for us, for example. So that was the reason why we added or created Krell and added some libraries around it that we have some uh, intermediate layer of testing and that we can also test our implementation and then update it when we want to update it, right? So um, that, that was one of the reasons why I'm still preferring to go for an implementation and release SDK. But that's just my opinion. Yeah, it makes sense because we still have to add some logic to uh, clone the bucket and then read the S1 and then do that and yeah definitely that wouldn't writing that in bash is not desirable so yeah i mean we we should uh discuss that here in the, in the issue yeah uh i think i saw i can see the window but i think i saw mohammed raising a hand yeah i did yeah so i have one question uh where does provenance generation fit into this diagram okay yeah uh, that's and then the verification of provenance is yeah, that's the next, the next. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah, if okay. anybody has a, another question about this one. All right, so this is the, these are open issues on, on K release. So if anyone, if anybody wants to provide commentary or criticism, whatever. Uh, please feel free to do it there. Now, the next one about uh, provenance. Um, so th this was another topic that took people by surprise because uh, uh, there's not uh, very uh, widespread knowledge about what provenance is. So if you see, uh, one of the, the first question that came up yesterday was, what is a provenance attestation? So I uploaded one of our uh, attestations uh, to to be able to show you, uh, well, I just noticed that I took uh, an an older one, but uh, this is basically what it looks like. So provenance uh, attestations have two parts. One, it's a subject and a predicate. If you think about it like a phrase, is it basically a provenance at the, an attestation is telling you I did this, which is a predicate to that which is a subject. And then uh, if you take a look, this is one of the, our, um, the, our attestations that we produce with a Kubernetes release currently. And if you see here, we have the subjects, which are basically all of the artifacts that go out uh, with a, in, inside of the bucket right now. And then if you go all the way down, you'll see here the predicate. And in the predicate, we're trying to explain to someone looking at these documents and maybe possibly 
trying to reproduce or audit our releases, what we did to, to those, uh, to those, uh, what we did to get uh, those uh, those artifacts. So um, if you see here, we have this is a salsa version 0.1 attestation. So the syntax is not the current one. We we are producing 0.2, but I I fumbled the version and downloaded the 0.1 version. Um, so, but it's basically the same idea. So you have inside captured inside of the of the attestation the builder that is running your build, which in this case is um, Trail, uh, or, or we are pointing here to our release engineering uh, repository. Then the recipe. So what are we running uh, to make this happen? And this is the um, this is the build as code uh, thing that Salsa sometimes mentions. And this is our our entry point, which is the the cloud build for staging. And the arguments that we pass to the to the to launch the the command, and some metadata about uh, if you have the complete list of arguments in there, the environment is variables are captured in there, things like that. And the materials is what went as input to your to your build process. And we have the Kubernetes um, rep uh, repository and the commit we use to uh, we use to um, to build the, the the code, which I'm just noticing, it has a bug here, of a parsing bug of, of it. Um, so we, it is, it, it's kind of the same story here with attestations as with signing the images. We are currently building inside of of staging. We generate an uh, an attestation to describe our staging run, and then we also uh do the same thing during release the one i just showed is one of the staging uh at the stations so we run it inside of the release process and now uh one of the requirements to move to salsa level two is that we need to sign those and it's the same thing about the signatures as um as with the images that we need to sign them outside because we don't want the processes inside of staging particularly to have access to the credentials, but there's also more things to consider when when you are building the the provenance attestations. So the first one is you don't want to trust the parameters list to a process inside of staging. Uh, why? Because you can forge the attestation by running code as part of a build. So if you see, for example, if if I tell you this is my my inputs to my build, I could easily forge this from inside of the from inside of the build process to not only tell you a different commit, but I may also forge the repo. And maybe I didn't pull that code from Kubernetes. Kubernetes, maybe I pulled it from somewhere else. So that's why you need to ensure that the the provenance gets built outside of staging and outside of release. Release is less of a problem because it's code that doesn't uh, execute arbitrary code, I think, from from others uh, as, for example, the builder. When we run make inside of the Kubernetes code, we are uh, exposed to whatever is there that can potentially, and not only that, but also dependencies behind it that may execute other code. So what we uh, what we need to do is build and sign the attestations outside of of those two steps. So what I was thinking is a flow like this, which is a little bit more complicated than the previous one. So the idea would be uh, before we run staging and we, after we clone the repository, we build the the a partial attestation, which captures uh, things like the build point, things like the parameters we're going to be using to execute trail, and um, and as much as information as we can before the run, then we pass it out to CREL, which would uh, execute, produce some outputs, the fast, whatever. And we are already uh, storing those in the SVM. So the idea would be to add a second uh, a post staging step that would be able to retrieve that uh, at the station, which we stored in a volume that is not available to CREL uh, outside. 
And so we retrieve that at the station in a bucket or a volume, whatever. And then we use the previously partial attestation, the subjects that would be defined in the SVOM. We combine those to combine to create the full attestation and we sign the attestation uh, outside of, of Prel. And um, from them we store from there we store the attestation alongside with um, in the bucket and then do the same thing to describe uh, the the release step. We execute something before, store a partial attestation, and then we run a release, and then we complete the attestation afterwards. Um, if you saw some of the, if you saw the the list I drew to about the missing salsa three pieces, you will see that some of the items uh, I I lay down here are prefixed by builder. And the idea is that we build, um, in fact, I already have a demo that, that I wanted to show, but it's not ready for prime time yet. Uh, the idea is that I want to get going a, a, a provenance builder that we can also use uh, to generate the attestations for other things. Because if you think about uh, attesting to things, you need to get the complete picture of everything that went from source to every transformation until we got to the finish to the finished product. So we would we would be generating an attestation for stage, an attestation for release, but also potentially uh, attesting to what the image promoter does. So uh, if I want to know when was this image promoted uh, and what what did we do to promote to promote it? The best version, the, the best way to get that information would be to generate an attestation during the image promotion and sign it so that I can go and have a, a, a written record of, of what happened. So maybe it's a lot to see it before. Uh, some probably, uh, especially for folks that are not uh, yet familiar with some of these things, maybe also may take a little time to, to consume, but happy to answer questions and keep the discussion going. And, and if we have time, we am happy to, to answer some of them uh, just now. Cool. Thank you for this update. So I would expect that this will be part of the salsa cap, right? Part of what? The salsa cap, which is it's is it open or is it already merged? Uh no, it's not. I mean, right now I'm just proposing a change to the to the flow uh to see if anyone has any objections on how we can do this. Um I think for next week. Probably, I I think I can get the the builder ready and maybe do an execution run in my branch so that we can uh, effectively verify that it works. Uh, and the idea would be uh, to produce another another tool that we can share. And actually, this uh, what got me going was uh, when we were working on the cryo, uh, uh, looking into the cryo supply uh, chain. So how can we make this effort also usable by other pro projects? And this is a would be produce a really nice tool to do that. Um, so same thing. Uh, if anybody wants to dump some uh, thoughts or whatever, happy to hear them. Now stop holding the, the meeting for others too. Cool. Thank you. So we have three minutes left and three topics on the agenda. I think we can't cover all of them, but Laurie, do you think you can cover the road mapping update in three minutes? Less than. Uh, yeah. Basically, it's just to say there is an update. Uh, the work is in progress. If you go to the links in the agenda, you can see the work that we did with the um, 
community infrastructure issue. So we've updated the issue with a work plan. If you look at the description field, you'll see all of the milestones and tasks that we've identified so far. There is also an effort to build user personas. I would really like to get feedback from this group about those because um, the goal is, are we capturing the customer, the user of the work that we are doing um, accurately? And thanks, Jason, for helping with that. Um, we did a user persona exercise yesterday uh, during a session on signing release artifacts topic. Uh, if you click that link in the agenda, you'll go to the Miro where um, we have a lot of the action items from yesterday's session mapped out in a sequence. That's it. Arno? Yeah, I have a request about the different milestone we have in the issue. Is it possible to merge milestone one question resolve and milestone two code deliverable? Because some of those items I kind of directly relate. So I feel like we can basically do that in just one milestone and trying to address this, some of those items at the same time. Uh, we are addressing them at the same time. It's just a breakout that there's doc needs and code needs. So that's why they're all like milestone one. No, basically there's one question resolve and the other one is code deliverable. So yeah, yeah, they go together though. Oh, okay, so it's just basically a way to separate them. Yeah, exactly. It's just to show like we have code needs and we have doc needs. Okay. And then like some milestones only have doc needs. So you won't, you know, for now, maybe we saw, we see some code needs later. But yeah, they're they're numbered like milestone one, code deliverable, doc deliverable, questions to resolve. Consider that as one package. And then I think milestone two has a similar setup a variety okay. of needs. But it's all one thing. Okay. Yeah. Yep. All right, thank you. And with that, we are mostly out of time. We have two topics left. I would like to move them over to the next meeting or follow up on Slack um, because one is regarding the KK branch rename. Carlos, I see Bob on the call. I think we have a Slack thread open. So can we follow up with the topic on that thread? Yep, I'm good with that. Cool. Thank you. Um, enjoy the rest of the day. I don't want to use much more time. And see you soon. Thanks. Bye.